Plug in some attitude with Sound Boys. So hi, Dan. Hi. We are here at Super Booth. It's 2024. Yep. And uh, you're going to show us your new module, correct? Yeah. Yeah. So we have, I'm from 4MS Company, Dan Green, and we have the most exciting thing we've announced in probably a few years. It's the Meta Module. So here it is. The Meta Module plays virtual software patches on your rack hardware with real knobs, real CV jacks, and uh, buttons and things. So you get the benefits of software where you can say load and save patches, or you can um, you know, add multiple instances of a module, for instance, and you, you also get the benefits of hardware where you actually have a tactile real interface where you can touch and patch to other things. So looking at this, you see we have over 160 built-in modules, which includes most of the 4MS stuff, also a lot of Bifaco modules, we also have a bunch of clones of various um, uh, open source modules like the Mutable Instruments modules. We have nonlinear circuits modules, Hetrix CV. Um, uh, we have the sequencer from uh, Scanner Darkly Orca's Heart sequencer. And there's a ton of, uh, there's some physical modeling stuff we have on here. We also have a bunch of, tons of utilities. Pretty much everything you need to get your creative juices flowing on, and make some really interesting patches. So. Um, all these modules on here that I'm scrolling through here are also available on the computer on VCV Rack. And if you don't know what VCV Rack is, it's a free open source software platform that lets you, it's a, it's a Eurorack virtual environment. So you make patches on the computer, Windows, Macs, Linux, whatever. It's made by VCV, it's awesome software. And all these modules are on that, uh, that program. So you can make your patches on that program and then transfer them to the meta module on the SD card or USB stick and then play them on the meta module without the computer connected. Uh, you also can just make the patches on the meta module here. So like for instance, let's say I just want to add this uh, Bifaco Hexmix VCA. So I click it, now I have a patch with the Bifaco Hexmix VCA. I can start patching and turning knobs. So it's just that simple to, to, make, to make something happen. So, so how, how do you know, like does it, how, how easy is it to figure out what is mapped to where? Oh, I'll show you, yeah. Okay. So um, I want, uh, before I go into that though, um, here I'll load a patch. Uh, but I want to mention that besides the 160 built-in modules, we also have a plug-in system. And that's, and that's like the newest announcement we have about this, is that you can now load third-party modules as plugins into this. So we, already we have over 200 third-party modules uh, ported over to the MetaModule platform. And that includes modules from Vog Audio um, and uh, 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 Valley, including their Plateau Reverb and a few other other modules. Um, Chow DSP, uh, Nano Modular, they're also they're around the corner. Um, they have their modules ported over, and a few other companies are also working on. So that 200, that number 200 is right now, and we expect that to grow exponentially. As so, if you're a uh, plugin developer, then it's super easy. We have on our GitHub an SDK. You can go there and check out. Um, it's it's a free. Uh, a very free open license. You can sell your modules, you can sell your plugins, you can give them away however you want. Um, and we just have a system, a, a SDK that you can use to recompile your VCV rack plugin as a meta module. So it's super simple to convert from VCV to meta module. So yeah, so yeah, so this is a patch I made. I actually made this one on the computer, but it, it's pretty simple. This is called dual, this is dual envelope and dual ensemble oscillator patch. So there's, I'll just go ahead and play it. So you hear sound. Um, so here is, I just turn a knob, and right, I'm, this is a regular ensemble oscillator. If you're familiar with this module, I'm changing all the parameters here. So um, now, if I can zoom in a little, you can see the ensemble. So this is how you uh, change. So you can see when I turn a knob, there's a red, there's a color around it, and it's actually turning on the screen when I'm turning the physical one. The color matches the color of the knob that I'm turning. So you see, so here's twist, here's detune, here's uh, cross FM, warp. So the, the knobs are mapped to these knobs, and then the jacks are also mapped. So here I have a uh, uh, sequence I'm going to play. This is super noisy. 
Right, so I'm, I plug into the one volt per octave jack and I'm, sequ I'm running a sequence here. So um, this is actually, I mentioned, oh here, let me show you. This is a Eurorack kind of looking thing. You can see, like, you can even see some patch cables. I have an envelope, I'm not using this envelope module right now, but um, there's another view that's maybe more, if you're less familiar with the modules or you want to get more performance mode, it's called knob view here. So this is, this is knob view, this is a knob set, we call it. It's all 12 knobs. And you see when I turn the knobs, they change there, and the colors match the color of the knob. So you can easily see what's, what's mapped to what, what knob is gonna do what. There's also the jacks here, and here's the jacks. I only have some jacks mapped for this patch. But um, now, in, like I said, I don't know if you, if you caught this, but I said this is a dual ensemble oscillator patch. So there's actually two. We're only listening to one right now. I can play the other one. So here, the second one is just kind of droning away. As I turn the knobs, it doesn't change. That's because this knob set is just for the first ensemble oscillator. All these knobs are right on the first one, the one that's being sequenced. If I wanted to control the other one that's just droning away, I could switch knob sets. And it's easy to do, you just hold down the button and turn the knob. So now this button is red, which says I'm on the second knob set. So now my knobs are controlling the second ensemble oscillator, the one that's not being sequenced, right? So that's a knob set. You can have up to eight knob sets, and each knob set has 12 knobs, because there's 12 hardware knobs, and then each of these knobs can have up to eight mappings, uh, eight virtual knobs that can be mapped to, and each of those mappings can have a, a different minimum, maximum, different range that you want. Um, so you can, you can control a lot of different things. So uh, let me show you. So that's kind of like a, an example of how you would make a patch, that, a meta module patch that's like, I want oscillator in my patch. I want two oscillators and I want an envelope. Maybe I need an attenuator. You just want some modules that you're going to use to connect to other things in your patch and you know, run, run the volted, uh, one volt per octave in and run the outputs to different things and sequencers and things. So that's one way to use the meta module, like a bunch of different modules. And then, uh, and you could of course switch on, switch on the fly easily. Another way is to kind of make a more self-contained patch. So more or less self-contained. You can maybe have clock sync and stuff like that. So let me show you an example of that. So I have another patch here. Um, and play it. So this is a simple little patch I'm running. I have a plates clone. I have an ensemble oscillator again. I have a bunch of mixers, patch cables going everywhere, kick drum, um, you know, envelopes, VCAs, uh, uh, nonlinear circuits, sequencers. We have the QCD here, which is kind of driving the main rhythms. Now you can see, like, I can I can move around on the different knobs here and select them. If I pick this like div molt one here, I can turn any knob, even if it's not mapped. I just go here and I just turn the knob. Right, I'm adjusting it. Um, and now, if I did want to to map this to something physical, I could add it right there and just wiggle a wiggle a knob, and now it's mapped to this. So now I'm controlling that. So that's how you create a mapping on the on the um, meta module. Now, in the, if I say like this is way too wide of a range, I don't want to go crazy slow, crazy fast. I could click on that mapping, and now I can set my minimums and maximums. So I could go from like here to uh, maybe not that fast, maybe to here. So now I'm just limited to that range. Right? And there's a bunch more things you can do here. I'm not going to go into every detail, but that's the basic kind of way you make a mapping. You can also do MIDI mappings here. So here's MIDI, and um, I, could, I could say MIDI, and then I, let me plug in my MIDI keyboard here. And then I just wiggle a CC knob here. Uh, what's that, CC10? So it says MIDI CC10 detected. Hit OK, and now this is controlling it, the MIDI CCs. So it's that easy to create mappings from MIDI. Of course, you know, MIDI has, what, 127 CCs, plus pitch bend, aftertouch, all, all these other things. Um, you could do, we support up to four, four uh, voice polyphony, note and gate, on, on the meta module. So you can make uh, polyphonic MIDI patches. Um, so yeah, that's one way to kind of expand your, 
um, you know, expand the number of knobs that you, you have in control because you can do MIDI. Of course, it's like super easy to, to have MIDI equipment. This is a USB-C MIDI host. Also, this, this USB-C jack can be for an SD card or a, a thumb drive too. So um, another way to expand the meta module, if you do need more, um, is we have these expanders. So here's eight knobs. This is the meta knobs. And so it just adds eight more mappable knobs. And then we have, uh, we have a slider version, which isn't here too. And then we have the buttons. So these are LED buttons that you can map. So um, especially nice because the main model doesn't have buttons built in. And then here are the, uh, here's an audio CV expander. So six audio CV ins, eight audio CV outs. And they're 24 bit, 48 kilohertz, and the negative 10 to plus 10 DC coupled. So the way you would want them, the same with the onboard, I didn't mention this earlier, but the onboard audio CV jacks are the same, same specs there too. So, and then the last expander I have here is the Wi-Fi expander. And this Wi-Fi expander is uh, a, another way to, to uh, make it easier to have a connection to a computer. So I have here VCV rack open already. Um, you probably can't hear it, but it's making sound. I'm playing, playing some patch that I just made. So let's say I wanted to um, add a module. I could just you know click. This is VCV rack. We didn't make this software, but you can use it to create patches. There's the meta module. Let's say I wanted to patch this jack, this envelope out to output five. So I could just do that. So now it's mapped to that jack. Let's say I wanted to map this knob, let's say this one, to, um, you know, I don't know, this knob. So I could just see, I just clicked on the ring, it turns red, and then I just click on the knob I want to map it to. And now when I turn this knob, it turns that knob to. And I can set the range, I already had it mapped to something else. Um, you know, I can set the minimum maximums or whatever I want there. Whenever I, whenever I patch sounds good, I like it, then I just hit save, and I save this file then you put that on, on an SD card or a USB thumb drive, or you save it on the, on the, you know, on the hard drive or whatever, and then you go over to the Wi-Fi. Um, uh, this is a web page that connects to the Wi-Fi module, and you can just upload it here, and then it'll show up on your, your meta module right there. So you don't need any wires. So depending on your workflow, you know, for some people, Wi-Fi, like you don't want to use Wi-Fi while you're making music. I understand. But we just want to give options for different workflows that you want. You want to have your computer connected to make change. You want to just work on the meta module directly with headphones and just zone out. You can do that too. So uh, what was the kind of like challenge of kind of getting all of that <laughs> into, <laughs> into a box and like deciding, because it feels like deciding what to add is kind of, going to be quite difficult right yeah yeah it's been we've been working on this since before covid um interesting story uh is uh it actually started as a vca module we we're just going to make a little uh, vca that you could pick different algorithms low pass gate vca low pass filter um and from there it kind of grew into a multi-effects unit which then it grew into multiple effects which then grew into like all the 4ms modules could be on there and then that grew into like hey why don't we use vcv rack to uh to you know preview your patches and then and then it kind of just, and then other people wanted, hey, why don't you, can you put your my, my modules on this too? And then, so yeah, it's, it's grown slowly like that. Um, the big, the, yeah, there are a lot of technical things behind the scenes just to make it feel natural. The, the processing power of this is way huger than anything we've ever used. Anything that else that I'm aware of in Eurorack, um, it's, a, it's a basically a mini computer, but it's not running an operating system. There's no Linux, there's no, the startup time is very fast. Latency could be less than a millisecond if you set a small block size. So it's very, it's very responsive, it feels like real hardware, it doesn't feel like you're running through a computer. So it was a, a lot of technical details, and the software is all open source, so when, uh, when that's released, you, if you are that kind of person that wants to see our, our journey, you can, you can definitely look at that. It's been, it's been a long, it's been many years, but it's worth it. Yeah, because it feels like there was, a, a while back, there was a few that kind of tried to put, like, a, like, do this kind of meta module thing, but it never really, like, took off. So it's kind of interesting to see that it's been done without an operating system, because yeah. those ones seem to be more just, like, running a computer kind yeah. of OS. Yeah, like, yeah, I think I wanted it to not feel like an iPad. I didn't want to feel like I, because you can get an iPad, whatever, you know, you can just put one right here and just have something running on it, that's, and that's totally fine. But that just wasn't, I wanted, I didn't want to do that. For me, just that's my choice. So and I figure other people might also want to have the real like knobs. I'm touching something, I'm really like feeling, this is not even encoders, these are real like knobs. And, and real CV that's like maximum range. So to give that experience uh, is, is just the challenge. I don't know, I just got obsessed with it for years and still am. And so just it has to be right, it has to be perfect. So 
I feel like it's finally at the place where we can show it and like, it feels smooth, it feels like a module, it feels like hardware, it doesn't feel like a computer, but it works with the computer seamlessly too. Brilliant. So uh, I guess the next question is uh, when and how much? When and how much, yeah. Yeah, the numbers. So it's going to be 649 US retail. The retail ship date's August 27th. And the expanders will be around 100 bucks each and they'll be released in stages afterwards. Brilliant. Oh, I, well, one more expander, I'm sorry. The, um, there's a digital input and output gates in and also TRS I2C and TRS MIDI. Been much requested feature, so. Brilliant. Well, Dan, thank you very much for speaking to us and yeah. uh, have a great show. Thanks, yeah.